This video is sponsored by BetterHelp. You're hiding out in a dimly lit corner at a crowded house party when a chaotic abstract painting catches your eye. This $10 bootleg Jackson Pollock print seems like more charismatic company than that guy shotgunning a craft beer. So you stop and really soak it in. And that's when it happens. That's right, a smirking dude in an ascot with a perfectly manicured mustache approaches and declares, this is an art. Is he negging you? Probably. Still, you feel compelled to engage. Modern art's reputation is on the line, and you're the only person who can save it. So, how do you calmly and brilliantly explain to this guy that he's positively off his aesthetic rocker? We'll tell you how in this episode of How to Sound Smart, about modern art. With your friends or on a date, arguing online with someone you hate, conversation is an art, so let us tell you how to sound smart. Before we dive in, we want to thank this video sponsor, BetterHelp. Is there something that's interfering with your happiness or is preventing you from achieving your goals? Maybe your museum visit will inspire you to dive into the high pressure modern art market, which is pretty stressful. Or maybe you just need help working out your winter doldrums. No matter what's bothering you and no matter where in the world you're located, BetterHelp can assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. And because BetterHelp's network has over 20,000 therapists to choose from, it's easy to find one whose experience suits your unique needs. But it's easy and free to change therapists if you don't hit it off. Once you sign up for BetterHelp, you can start communicating with your therapist within 48 hours. Log into your account at any time to send a message, and you'll receive timely and thoughtful responses. You can also schedule weekly video or phone sessions. It's not a crisis line, and it's not self-help. It's professional therapy, done securely online. Plus, it's more affordable than traditional in-person therapy. And financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier today. So visit BetterHelp.com slash Wisecrack to join the over 2 million people already taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. And when you go to BetterHelp.com slash Wisecrack, you'll get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash Wisecrack. And now, back to the wonderful world of modern art. Modern art's an umbrella term for artistic traditions that span from about the 1860s to the 1970s. Anything made after is, confusingly enough, called contemporary art. And that includes your third grade macaroni self-portrait. Influential figures in modern art include chronic Apple enthusiast Paul Cezanne and Edouard Manet, who painted lovely images of Parisian urban life. You can think of him as the analog streetwear blogger. Modern artists thought hyper-realistic representation was for nerds and preferred to experiment wildly with form, color, and composition. Their art, like your brief fling with Ryan Reynolds, was often meant to read more conceptual than literal. Modern artists were reacting to the quickly changing urban world, where things like light bulbs and Coca-Cola started popping off. Because everybody was so overstimulated by bright lights and fizzy beverages, modern artists felt that old artistic traditions were now too safe and boring. Especially once the devastation of World War I was over, artists wanted to cause a more complex reaction in the viewer, even when that reaction was really just a lot of confused head scratching with a side of existential angst. As new technology made printing easier and cheaper, some modern artists started painting mass-printed advertisements for hip events like concerts and readings. Take Toulouse Lautrec, for example, whose nightlife posters evoke sexy, candlelit Parisian rooms. And so, just as modern artists were pushing definitions of art, the line between art and advertisements started getting blurrier than Claude Monet's precious water lilies. And this merging of the art and ad worlds is why you'll remember this expired soup can on your deathbed. Overall, modern artists were less interested in classical beauty and more interested in depicting the truth. Even when the truth, like your litigious landlord's taste in carpeting, is pretty ugly. So the question became, what truth should art try to capture and convey? Take surrealism. That clock is melting precisely because Dali and his buddies were actively trying to sidestep your rational brain and access more visceral, pure feelings hidden deep in your subconscious. The truth, then, per surrealists, is whatever you feel, especially when you feel like a third round of rosé at brunch. Hey, my truth is my truth. 
Many modern artists were inspired by noted shrink and phallus enthusiast Sigmund Freud and his writing about the subconscious. These dealt with heady things like the fractured nature of self or the impossibility of meaning. Abstract painters and surrealists stand Freud, even if they had never once ogled their mother's bosom, okay? Modern art's known for being exorbitantly expensive, but that trend didn't really kick off until the 1980s. That's when a rise in global art investors, a reduced tax incentive to donate to art museums, and an overall vibe of hypermaterialism took over the industry. Also, as modern artists started, you know, dying, their work only skyrocketed in value. Ironically, though all these rich people were arguing over the dollar value of modern artwork, many modern artists themselves question whether art had any intrinsic social value at all. They say, you say, they say, my rescue micro pig could paint this. You say, the point isn't just the piece itself, it's the way it evokes specific emotions. Colors and shapes have associations and make you feel things. And even if Mr. Pinky theoretically could have made this, he, um, didn't? Rothko beat him to it. Better luck next time, babe. Then you take a breath and add, also, it's not about the complexity of each paint stroke. It's about the ideas being conveyed. And often those ideas have to do with how much being a human sucks in modern times. Pretty relatable, right? Speaking of, I better go feed my parking meter. They say, not one person in this Picasso painting is hot. You say, using the grotesque or surreal to emphasize the strangeness of the human condition actually lets us think deeper about what it means to be human. And it does so in a more profound way than looking at an oil painting of a handsome duke. All we really learn about that guy is he looked sexy in satin. But also, we get it, looking at hot people rules. They say, is this a urinal or is it art? Cause boy do I got a whiz. You say, a lot of modern art is about challenging the very definition of art itself. For a lot of people, art is whatever a monocle wearing museum curator says is art. So when Marcel Duchamp called this urinal art, he was middle fingering that power dynamic. Then when Monocle Guy was like, hey, this is brilliant, the joke changed because dude just paid millions of dollars for a toilet. Pretty punk, right? They say, art should represent real life. You say, if you want realism, go take a selfie. Part of the reason modern art got so creative is because photography kind of one-upped artists in depicting real life. So modern artists creatively pivoted. That's why so much modern art is more about reconfiguring reality to depict things you can't see out your window. And often this actually lets artists make meaningful social commentary, like Otto Dix's monstrous depictions of the dickish German elite partying down while the rest of the country was starving. Here's how to blow their minds. Ascot guys starting to finally come around to the mind-bending vibes of modern art. But you're not just trying to bend his mind, you're ready to melt it like a dolly clock. Here's how to do it. You charmingly note that what makes modern art pretty cool is that in the old days, there was a lot of pressure for your art to be morally good or even educational, which is why people went ham on Jesus, biblical stories, and the like. Modern artists were like, F that noise and decided, let's just make art for art's sake. In fact, painter James McNeil Whistler actually sued an art critic who said his abstract art wasn't truly art because it wasn't socially good for the world. And the dude won! Well, he was only awarded less than a penny, but hey, victory is priceless. Art, like a judge who's just removed their wig and robe, no longer had to be terribly concerned with morality. By now, you probably have Mr. Ascot waxing poetic about the wonders of abstract expressionism while waxing his mustache. <laughs> and you're so pleased with your progress that you're totally willing to agree when he suggests that the dribble of wine he spilled on his white blazer is a work of art in itself too. Gorgeous. Our work here is done and you are officially clever. See you next time on How to Sound Smart.